The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. EPMD. Eric Sermon and Paris Smith, the duos known to the world as Eric and Paris Making Dollars, who are longtime friends that came into the music industry and gained massive success. Drop it. Before I had my turntables, he had the S1200s downstairs playing the break beats and stuff like that. But uh, that was the last of the serious cats of that generation, and then we came along. And it's time to learn. I'm the P double E M D E E, and one thing I hate is the whiteness. And then once we came along, you know, we had a different perspective. Always, 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 always loved the EPMD. So I took that style that Eric and Paris had, you know, because they never was two, 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 two. They was like, hit them. From their debut single, It's My Thing, it was apparent that they had what it took to be famous in the ever-growing genre of hip hop. The two would go on to become household names, gaining fans around the world with countless hit singles, several gold certified albums, and recognition by many print publications and industry vets. Oh, my favorite group of all time. Yeah, you know my bucket hat's a little big, so what? The importance of it, yeah, yeah, we're back to work. I took time off, all the rappers got drunk. But, um, like again, man, they were, they were so young. I don't think they really knew, you know, what they were doing either. They were freestyling as they were going. Paris Smith was, he was, he was a business cat. You know, Paris was serious. It's like you just want people know, they know. Ain't nothing you can sell to people, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing you can buy. It ain't no image that you can put on the video. Forming the first squad of all squads, which was the Hit Squad. With the Hit Squad, which consists of Das FX, Redman, and K-Solo, all of whom are managed and produced by EPMD members Eric Sermon and Parrish Smith. Nah, it's like, you know, me and Parrish, you know, we make funky music, you know, we EQ it to the bass, so you can't go no more for the systems and stuff like that. Well, I think the blueprint was laid, you know, by us, but we seen Juice Crew come too, before us. EPMD hail from Long Island, known as Strong Island in the rap community, and they have been a growing force in rap as artists and now businessmen. Business, never personal. Business. These guys always keeping up with the business right here. Now rappers who took it personal, word is mine. Got it, yo, you can't take this personal. A lot of rappers is losing it out there. And they cause their music, it's cause their personal stuff. So you keep it business, not personal, then you're being a fact. EPMD. You know, Paris was educated. You know, Paris came from a good family, you know. And um, he had positive role models, his father and all, and, you know, was in his life. So, you know, Paris was built right. You'll find singles from three of the groups in the camp topping the Billboard rap chart, making success for the hit squad a family affair. Compiling the successful groups that EPMD discovered, got signed to major labels, and managed, which was the brainchild for landing the hit squad tour. The success of the tour Record sales and new signed acts blessed Parrish Smith with a $10 million partnership with RCA in the 90s to land his own imprint to distribute PMD records. Prior to releasing the album Strictly Business on June 7, 1988, Eric and Parrish were young teenagers making their way through the streets of Brentwood, Long Island. We all was the same age, at the, you know, 19, 20 years old, So, but he was just so serious for that age, you know. He was real mature, and I was just like, damn, all right. Now, my name is James Craze Billings, the executive producer and co-creator, along with Parrish PMD Smith, of this docuseries, Life Before EPMD, The Parrish Smith Story. Story starts life before EPMD, the story is Paris Smith. The journey, the footsteps, the hustles, the struggles that ultimately led 
to hit records and becoming a legend. And to go through it step by step, to pay homage, respect to all the people who actually supported me before I touched the microphone and then up into the microphone and then to the present where we are. Right Studio bright lights where you find the P. One of the best to ever do it, check my accolades. All the smoke that went down in the tracks I laid. Just a... Music was always around in the household. I got six brothers and sisters. Both my family's from Brooklyn. My pops is from Marcy. My mom's from Bethesda Stuyvesant, Green Avenue, Lewis Avenue. My older brother James formed a group called Smitty D and the Rock Squad, okay? In the early days when I was 13, my brother James and Inez used to actually sneak out the house to go to the Bronx River and the T Connection. That's when hip hop was popping in the early days. And back there, when you went uh, to the Zulu functions, at the end of the night, you can buy a cassette of the actual show. So I used to wait up to two or three o'clock in the morning till they got home, they go and they go to sleep. I'll take the cassette, go outside, sit in the car, listen to the show that night. And from that, my brother pursued a career in the music industry uh, on Tommy Boy Records with a record called Facts of Life. And back there, you know, brothers really, really had to put in that work to get on. 